I've been heat embossing for well over 10 years with embossing powders, and this is something that I never really knew or I never really gave it much thought to. And so it's changed the way that I look at embossing powders, and it's just one simple thing. Now I think my first experience with this concept came when I went to swatch my embossing powders, which we all know I never finished. And I swatched them on some white cardstock first, and then I decided to put them onto some black cardstock. And I started embossing and they were looking really great and I thought to myself, wow, this is amazing. I never really think about using embossing powders, aside from gold and silver, on black cardstock. These look really great. And then I pulled out an embossing powder and it didn't show up and just melted clear on my black cardstock and I was super confused. Why did th these work and this one didn't? Is it defective? What's wrong with it? But there's a solution. Now, when I was at Creative World in 2019 in Frankfurt, I went to the WOW embossing powder booth. Now, I have seen Marion at shows before, but I never really had much of a chat with her. So she was showing me some of their new stuff, and then she pointed out to me that there are eight letters on their embossing powders in brackets, and one of them is T and one of them is O, and O is stands for opaque, and T stands for translucent, and then it all started to click. Now let's explore these two different types of embossing powder a little further. Now when it comes to simple embossing in one layer onto a piece of white cardstock, either powder, opaque, or translucent is fine to use. You aren't going to see any real significant differences. So let's look at ways in which you will see a difference. So let's take a blended background that is completely dry so I can add some embossing powder on top. And let's say I want to emboss a sentiment on top. I'm going to choose a sentiment that's nice and bulky to get the best results. And I'll add it to both of the backgrounds, but I'm gonna cover one in opaque embossing powder and I'm gonna cover one in translucent embossing powder. Now when the powder is melting, you'll start to see the difference. And when it is finished, you'll really see the difference in both powders. The opaque embossing powder stands its ground and you'll see the sentiment clearly, while the translucent one gets lost on a colored background. Now let's look at this concept again using a stencil. I'm putting embossing ink through a stencil on top of a blended background. Now I do want to talk a minute about what I'm actually using to apply embossing ink to my stencil. Now this is something new that I'm trying out and it's called an embossing dabber from Tim Holtz. It's made essentially for using on stamps or you can even use it on backgrounds like this and exactly like it says an embossing dabber meaning you're meant to dab. Not a ton of ink comes out of it like it would if you were using an embossing refill for example and it's a really great way to control the area that you're adding embossing to. I was able with this stencil here to actually really pick and choose the little cheetah spots that I wanted to add to my background. And I really, really like this. So I have to say this is a newer product that I've tried and I loved. However, I don't know how it works on the long term yet since it's a relatively new product, but I definitely really love the idea of applying embossing ink this way rather than through an ink pad when it comes to stencils at least. Now this can look gorgeous and clear, which is obviously a translucent embossing powder. Here's a look at a translucent colored embossing powder compared to an opaque embossing powder. Now you can get some really cool effects using translucent embossing powder. Let me show you what I mean. I created a background in various colors and I'm gonna add embossing ink to a stencil. Just make sure that your background's completely dry before adding that embossing ink or the powder will just stick everywhere rather than to the stencil part. Now I'm going to add some embossing powders to the background in various colors. Because these are translucent, they're going to be affected by the color underneath. I think it's fascinating that the difference between opaque and translucent is something I never gave much thought to before, even though I was told about this in 2019, but it does make a world of difference when embossing on colored backgrounds. So since we are giving embossing powders a fresh new look, check out this video here in which I use embossing powders in a way that not many people think of using them. Hint, it doesn't use any embossing ink. I'll see you there.